When it comes to telescopes, size matters. That's because, ultimately, telescopes are light collectors. Whether it's a backyard rig or a multi-million dollar space mission, all telescopes work by gathering light from the stars. The more light you can gather, the more detail you can see. There are lots of tricks you can play to make small telescopes collect more light, like unfolding mirrors. Looking at you, James Webb. But when you get right down to it, there's no substitute for good old-fashioned square footage. And Arecibo's radio telescope held the crown for having the most square footage to collect light for 53 years. But how did this giant telescope end up in the middle of the Puerto Rican rainforest? In the late 1950s, the American military wanted to understand more about the upper atmosphere, also known as the ionosphere to detect nuclear missiles re-entering the atmosphere. So, the Advanced Research Projects Agency funded Cornell University to build a radio telescope that could study the ionosphere. The university looked around for places to build a giant dish and selected a big sinkhole in Puerto Rico near the town of Arecibo. They chose Puerto Rico because it was easy to access in a politically stable country and close to the equator. The latitude is important because if you can only point your telescope straight up, you want to build near the equator so you can observe as much of the sky as possible as the Earth rotates. A telescope pointed up at the North Pole could only ever see the same chunk of sky around the North Star. And they chose a sinkhole for the simple reason that they wouldn't have to dig a brand new hole and could save on construction costs. The dish was a giant half-sphere, 305 meters across at its widest point. To put that into perspective, the Chrysler Building in New York City is just under 319 meters Arecibo is designed to bounce radio waves from the sky into a receiver suspended above. This is how satellite dishes for satellite TV work, but on a much bigger scale. But Arecibo's telescope is different, because it's more spherical compared to the parabola of a satellite dish. Most satellite dish makers choose parabolas because when parallel rays of light bounce off of them, they get focused onto a single point. That makes the signal very clear. On the other hand, when parallel radio waves hit Arecibo's dish, they bounce off and focus into a line, not a point, making them much harder to collect and analyze. But if the researchers could deal with that fuzziness, they could take advantage of something unique to spheres. The curve is exactly the same no matter which part you look at. That means you can point the telescope by moving the receiver, not the dish. It was a challenge designing the right receiver. But in 1997, they installed an assembly made of two additional curved mirrors that could focus incoming light called the Gregorian Dome. And with that upgrade complete, the entire 305-meter dish in the bottom of a sinkhole could be effectively pointed 20 degrees in any direction just by moving the Gregorian Dome above. And Arecibo wasn't only great at receiving radio signals. It could also transmit them with a huge radio transmitter. In 1974, right after the dish upgrade, it famously used this transmitting ability to send a binary message to outer space, saying who we are and where to find us. Astronomers also used Arecibo to direct radio waves out into space, to bounce off of moons, planets, comets, asteroids, or the atmosphere, and listen to the echoes. The echoes revealed mountains on Venus, the shape of nearby asteroids, and much else besides. By looking very carefully at the moon, Arecibo also found secret Soviet radar stations. That's right. Arecibo was so sensitive that it essentially used the moon as a mirror to find out where on Earth Soviet radar signals were coming from. Arecibo was also at the heart of lots of other exciting discoveries, like the fact that some pulsars go quiet and that there are planets around stars other than our own. It also helped researchers find that there are building blocks of life in other galaxies and that Mercury's day lasts 59 days compared to the 88 days we once thought. That sounds like a varied list. That's because Arecibo was a powerhouse of scientific discovery for more than half a century. And we've just barely scratched the surface. Arecibo was amazing in part because its collecting area was huge, so it could pick up signals that other telescopes couldn't. Unfortunately, due to a combination of age, climate, and difficulty in repairs, in December 2020, the cable supporting the receiver assembly snapped, bringing the Gregorian Dome crashing down. We talked about this shortly after it happened in an episode of SciShow Space News. Engineers are still assessing the reasons it happened, and ground crews are still cleaning it up. This might not be the end for Arecibo, though. Astronomers have already proposed a successor for the site, 
dubbed the Next Generation Arecibo Telescope. The idea is to install a series of smaller dishes at Arecibo Telescope's previous location, and then make it steerable. Its 1,000 dishes would let them peer further into the cosmos to spot incoming asteroids and understand the effects of climate change on the atmosphere. But it's an expensive proposition, costing $400 million compared to the over $9 million that the original Arecibo Telescope cost in 1960, about $90 million in 2021 dollars. And we've already passed the decadal survey that determines the astronomy community's priorities. And it will be 10 years until the next one. But Arecibo is a name that carries a lot of weight in the scientific community, so it may get the funding it needs. Whether or not the next generation Arecibo gets built, there will always be a place in our hearts for the Arecibo telescope. Which is why we're immortalizing it as this month's space pin. It'll be available all month at dftba.com slash scishow. It's only available in November, so make sure to order yours soon, because in December, we'll have a whole new pin for you.